I think I've figured out one of the best iPhone home screen to avoid distractions as much as possible as a creative person. And in this video, I wanna talk you through what is on my home screen, why I set it up the way that I've done, and to hopefully inspire you to make your own version of this mindset and layout that I've put together. Something you'll immediately notice is that I only have one app homepage here, right? I have the app library here, which I have my own criticisms about, which I'll talk about later in the video, but I have one page for all of my apps. And that is something that I never used to have before. I used to have like multiple pages with different apps scattered into multiple folders, but I've just realized that you only really need one page. And then if you really want to find an app, you would just go here and search for it for Instagram, for example, and then you can click on it there. The only other page that I have is a widget page here, which just has, you know, time tracking stuff, my calendar and some, you know, battery indicator stuff and a nice photo of my cat with my lovely girlfriend. I don't use this that much. Like I don't remember ever like swiping and using the widget page. I just have it here because as far as I'm aware, it can't be deleted. So I might as well just fill it with something that I might use one day. So let's start with the main homepage. There's a really specific psychology that I wanted to implement when I chose which apps go where, because if I'm holding an iPhone with one hand, my thumb has to do some movement to do the, the tappity tap of the app. So I want the apps closer to the right hand side to be the most productive or frequent ones that I actually want to use that are going to be healthy for me. And the ones closer to the left are the ones that I use less frequently or want to be encouraged to use. Honestly, now that I'm looking at this, I should probably put YouTube Studio here. So it's a little bit further away. <laughs> I see it as work. I, I do YouTube. I should, I should, I should click on YouTube Studio and look at the analytics all the time. <laughs> yeah justified that one. So with my right thumb, you know, I'm not hitting this as much. I'm not hitting YouTube Studio as much because I kind of have to like stretch my thumb. And then all of the apps here on the right side are the ones that I actually want to be hitting. You know, my Notion, my Revolut, my Duolingo to learn Hungarian, get that practice in. All are on the right hand side. One of the crucial folders here I have is this one called Spare Minutes. I have so many apps on my phone that are genuinely productive and will teach me something or let me progress in a certain skill. I don't use them as much as I I should. I'm being honest. So I wanted to create a folder that if I'm ever in the line at the post office food shopping and I'm just stood at the checkout waiting for the woman to, to scan quicker that I would want her to, there's no reason why I can't hit this spare minutes folder and read a bit of my Kindle book or do a bit of flashcards for my language practice or listen to an audio book or I mean, I'm not meditating in the in the grocery store, but maybe I could, you know? So it's just a way to encourage me that if I actually hold my phone in one hand, the easiest thing to press is this and then to go in and hit Kindle, for example. So when you're looking at building your own focused system on your phone and you wanna just have one page, think about how much dexterity you actually have in your hand and which apps that you wanna make the easiest and less mus least muscle straining to reach for. And that's just gonna help encourage and put an extra bit of friction in front of you to tap apps that you either don't use as much or you don't wanna use at all. But honestly, you shouldn't have apps on this home screen that you don't wanna use, which is why we have either in search on iPhone or we have the app library. I have a love-hate relationship with this because you can't reorder anything. The most annoying thing is that Instagram is still a swipe away, right? I swipe and then it's there. Future Adam here. I installed iOS 18 on my phone yesterday and it turns out there's a new feature where you can have hidden folders in the app library where you can basically put any app that you want into this hidden folder and lock it behind either Face ID or Touch ID. It's a pretty decent feature to prevent you from doing that single swipe to the right and then you can easily just tap Instagram and have all of your minutes wasted away scrolling and doing unproductive stuff. So well done, Apple. I'm very impressed. But the second best option that I've found is just sign out of an app. So if I'm ever tempted to hit Instagram, I have to actually, you know, tap something and put in my password and username. And that just adds a bit more friction to the unconscious act of hitting Instagram out of pure, pure boredom. Okay, let's move up to widgets. So as you can see, I only have three here, but do I? I actually have more, which is this little swipey thing here, because obviously if you don't know in, in iOS, at least the latest iOS is you can stack widgets together. So on the right here, I have my Todoist. I have it on the right side again, because remember left and right is split between easy stuff to tap, useful apps to tap, more frequent apps to tap, and 
less frequent apps and Todoist is the one that I use more regularly I would say like if I'm just walking around and I come up with an idea of something that I need to do or a task or whatever it's so easy to just tap this widget and then Todoist is open and then I can press plus and then I can type in whatever I actually need to do or something that's popped into my mind that I don't want to forget and I want to just get it down somewhere very very quickly so then it's reminded to me versus like it slipped out of my brain and this cool YouTube video idea or whatever and then it's disappeared for Forever. We don't want that. And on the left side, we have my Notion widget. I actually have two, one for another YouTube client whose Notion I'm a part of for scheduling and organizing all of their video content. And then I have my own, which is my Creativepreneur dashboard. And then if I hit that, I'm right into my whole YouTube schedule. I can see what are the latest videos that are coming out. My productive iPhone, which is this video. So I know it's gonna when it's gonna come out. You know, some other, other stuff that it's very, very easy to do, especially adding a new video that I've thought of. So I can just press this plus button and then I can type in a new YouTube video and then it gets logged into my YouTube video idea slash production schedule archive. And it's also really, really easy to tap. Like, you know, it's not these two apps are actually the hardest to hit with my particular dexterity in my fingers so it's not like i'm putting it so out of place that it's incredibly difficult this is way easier to tap and this just requires a little bit of a little bit of extra stretching and then if we go to the very tippity top this is actually a pretty new addition for me before i i i think i had like weather or some other stuff but honestly i don't need to see the weather every single time i look at my phone I look out the window or i can just scroll down and put weather in and then you know i can see the weather right there this app is called countdown and it's a really cool widget app where you can count down to anything like a birthday or a holiday i have it either depressingly or encouragingly depending on your mindset <laughs> uh, i have it counting down to the amount of days left towards the end of the year and each little dot represents a day and that little orange one is where we are now and the, the lighter gray ones is the days remaining for the year. The amazing YouTuber Jay Alto got me onto the idea of having like a countdown widget. Check him out if you haven't, because he's incredibly underrated and amazing. But I just love having something that contextualizes time other than just the time in the day that I'm currently looking at my phone. Since I've been this on my phone for the past two weeks, I just feel that I'm reminded a little bit more during times when I might, you know, scroll this way and then hit Instagram or some other distracting app that, hey, the days are counting down. This is how much of the year is gone. This is how much you have left. So do you want to feel good by the end of the year that you've actually like used your time wisely rather than just letting distractions pull you into distraction waterfalls where you just scroll and scroll and scroll in forever, like mindlessly. And it's really pronounced to the top and aesthetically pleasing so i really like it so far i think i'm gonna keep that up for the long term i do want to also point out that this does not completely solve all of my distraction focused time that i might have like it's so easy to as we all know pull yourself into scrolling on things like email over and over again because you think that's you know refreshing your email all the time is the way to stay productive or very easy to bypass by just going on instagram or whatever you can be really strict with how you organize your phone you can be cold you can go completely cold turkey and wipe all of the apps that are social media related off your phone and just only install them when you need to use them I tried this for a little bit, but I found that I would have too many times where I need to get messaged on Instagram or I only talk to certain people on Instagram and by uninstalling it completely, I would miss out on DMs. I really, really wish that Instagram would make just Instagram Messenger app. And there are third party apps like, um, for example, Beeper that I was using for a little bit, but then I got a weird notification message from Instagram saying, hey, you're using a third party app to have your chats there and we you're not allowed to do that naughty boy so i stopped using it because of that which is annoying because i thought that might have been my solution to have an app where all the chats are are together and i don't have to have instagram unless i really want to use it to scroll which is not very often and i can just use it to you know dm people through there i don't think instagram are going to do that because they want you to use the app and they want you to you know they want you to spend time on the platform but a creative like me can dream that one day it will become a reality so this is not a foolproof plan I could be way stricter with this, but for me, this home screen is a good balance of what I want out of my phone. Like, I don't want my phone to be so dumb that I feel like it's restricting me in times when I need to use it for, you know, all the advanced smartphone-y stuff. But I also think it's organized in a way that it does, you know, slightly nudge me into a form of encouragement to, hey, use Duolingo, hey, how about you read a Kindle? Hey, how about you log that idea that you've got? Hey, be aware of the days that are ticking down. So for now, I really like it. It's the best 
phone home screen that I've had as a as a solopreneur slash freelance creative. But I'm never stuck to any one way of doing things. I'm always open to finding new ways that work for me during the times of the year and during periods of my life where I really need to maybe go full, full cold turkey <laughs> with things like Instagram. When I can do that, and then I can delete it and then it's gone, which is dumb because I, I need to send a DM to somebody later today. So. <laughs> on Instagram. I guess I could do it on the desktop app. So please leave your suggestions in the comments below for things that you've tried with your phones uh, to help kind of nudge you into being more focused, less distractible in your everyday lives. And if you like more geeky techie videos like this, you should definitely check out this other video on my channel where I walk you through seven essential apps that all creatives need to have on their devices. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.